Victoria Decides. Live election night coverage from 6pm Eastern Daylight Time on the 6 News YouTube channel and our website, 6newsau.com. Jeff Shaw, welcome to 6 News. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you here. So look, obviously you were a former Liberal MP here in Victoria turned independent. You haven't been in uh, Vic Parliament for a while, but you are trying now. Why is that? Well, that's a really good question, and I wasn't going to at all. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've had a number of friends and associates saying, you need to get back in. Look what Dan Andrews is doing to Victoria. We need you back in. And, look, that wasn't sort of enough, but, you know, it played on my mind a little bit. But then I wrote a book on Dan Andrews called Dan Andrews Unmasked, uh, and I started writing that r- roughly this time last year, September, actually, September, October last year. Finish it around May, and it was time for me to say I've got to fill that gap, that gap that has been put in by the Liberals leaving their base, Labor moving further to the left, and the Greens move, moving further to insanity. Uh, there's been a big gap um, left behind by these parties, and that's where I think I can come in as a Conservative and certainly the United Australia Party as the number one Conservative party in the land. So, yeah, about the, the United Australia Party, obviously we do have... Uh, quite a few Conservative parties contesting this election and qu- quite a few in general. I mean, you look at, uh, for example, you've got the the Freedom Party of Victoria. We have One Nation who are contesting this year. Um, there's a couple others, uh, Family First, trying to make a bit of a, a bit of a comeback. So, yeah, why, why the UAP specifically? Was there any other consideration of joining other parties? Well, I guess I've been a member of the United Australia Party since about 2015 when I left Parliament. Uh, so it was an easy choice for me to make and just uh, just to flow on from that. Gotcha. Now, there are obviously, you know, a number of issues that I'm sure you take with with Dan Andrews. What about someone who, who if theoretically, if you were still in Parliament, would be your leader, Matthew Guy? Um, he's obviously been um, facing a lot of challenges. He, you know, resigned after the last election loss and has uh, now come back now after we all know there was a spill last year. Um, what do you make from kind of an outside perspective, someone who hasn't been in Parliament for years, let alone in the Liberals, uh, what do you make of the direction he's taking the coalition in right now? Because based on the polls, it does not seem to be good. Well, even on the, uh, not just the polls, I mean, this should be an election to win. that's a win. I mean, you had Dan Andrews using his police force to shoot people in the streets of Melbourne. Pepper spray that pepper spray them in the streets of Melbourne. Exorbitant fines for things like not the, the, the massive crime of not having a face mask. You'll find five thousand four hundred dollars. Businesses fined a hundred thousand dollars for serving unvaccinated people. Uh, the list goes on. We lost the the our our pride and joy. The grand final at the MCG was lost two years in a row to other Australian states. First time in the history of football under Premier Dan Andrews. This should be a winnable election for just about anyone except for this Liberal government, this Liberal opposition. It's not looking likely. It's a very sad indictment on where the Liberals stand now because they had a chance to win and I don't think they are. And that's where we fit in as the United Australia Party. We're running for the upper house and really that's a, that's the Victoria's protection is to have us in that upper house. Liberals aren't going to win. Dan Andrews, or at least the ALP, will win. Whether he will win, I don't know his seat because it's been contested quite hotly there in Mulgrave. But you need us in the upper house to stop the stupidity and the ridiculousness that's been flowing through Victorian Parliament out to its its citizens. The upper house obviously does have, you know, a lot of of benefits being, of course, as we know, not just in Victoria, but it is the house of review. Um, But... Only contest in the upper house, you know, 16 odd candidates in eight upper house electorates. Um, Sure, it's a bit of a step down from what the UAP was doing only a few months ago at the federal election, running in every single seat. Um, Why is that? Surely you could could potentially make a dent. I mean, some of the um, UAP lower house vote, the federal election in some areas um, was pretty good for for a minor party. I think you're in the like 10 percent area for in some seats, which is... um, you know, not, not not something to be ashamed of. So why do that? Surely, because the lower house is obviously where government was formed and only a few months ago, um, your party federally was claiming that, oh, we, we're going to be in government. Craig Kelly's going to be PM. 
is it is it trying to avoid the embarrassment of that kind of claim being just you know totally wrong? Yeah, you, you're right that the upper house is a house of review. Well done for that one. But one thing that you may not be aware of, and your viewers may not be, or listeners may not be aware of, is that we have very stringent donation laws here in Victoria. So you will not see one United Australia Party big billboard, yellow and black billboard, anywhere in Victoria because the donation laws are such that uh, people like Clive Palmer are not able to put millions of dollars into a campaign. The unions are under Labor, but no other newcomer to Parliament is allowed to have a big donor. The, we, we are restricted. So our budget this year is probably less than $200,000 for the whole state, and most of that's printing how to vote cards. So that, that will answer uh, that question why we're not running lower house candidates. There is no money to be able to do that. The Victorian, and that's something that you need to, need to research and tell your viewers on this one. The donation laws are such that Dan Andrews has restricted new parties coming in and making a dint financially um, in, in elections. Now, obviously, there's a lot of issues um, when it comes to trust with our major parties right now. I think it's, it's some surveys, I don't know if it was federal or not, but um, it's low and it's really low in both the, the Labor and Liberal parties. Um, your own party... Um, some have claimed has a loose relationship with the truth. You, for one, make a bizarre claim that you guys have had three former prime ministers in your party. Uh, is the UAP a trustworthy option for Victorian voters? Well, if you do the history of the United Australia Party, the actual name United Australia Party, Billy Hughes, one of our greatest prime ministers, and Robert Menzies were two former prime ministers of the United Australia Party. But not your party. It's a different United Australia Party. Still the United Australia Party, same colours. Just because there's a gap in between, I think they use blue the UAP. UAP. Not, not they're not the same <laughs> colours. Like, well, you got the Liberals using the, the, the blue now, and in fact, it was uh, Robert Menzies who went and set up the Liberal Party. Um, so the United Australia Party has had three prime under that name has had three prime ministers. Yes, of course, it's not ours because we would say that those people died a long time ago. So the, it's not the party today. Very much like the Liberal Party is not the party of Robert Menzies when Robert Menzies set it up. Yeah, but like Billy Hughes wasn't even a prime minister under the United Australia Party. He was under what nationalists, National Labor, and Labor. Like he was under. I don't. A, I, don't I don't see how you can claim it. Like there's there. There was another United Australia Party in SA in the 1990s, and you don't go. You guys don't claim you're them. I mean. We, I think there's been relatives of, of um, Lions and Menzies who have said, you know, not the same party. And like, it's, it's like calling yourselves the Beatles. You're not the Beatles and you're not the old United Australia party. I don't, I don't see how you can claim it's your history. Well, I'm not actually claiming any of that. You're asking me a question. I'm not your, claiming Your party any has. Well, this is the first time the United Australia party is running in Victoria for the, a Victoria state election. And that's what we're concentrating on. So we're, we're looking at uh, getting rid of a dictator that shoots people in the streets, that has increased its debt more than five times in eight years, from $22 billion to over $110 billion. Unheard of stuff. Yeah, but how, how can you get rid of the, the dictator in, in Dan Andrews if you're not running in the lower house, which would stop him forming government? Like the, well, you, we can, you can obviously we, we, influence we, things in the upper house, but... Um, you can't get him out of his seat and you can't get the Labor Party out of government in the upper house. Well, that, that's very true. But what we can do is block a lot of legislation that comes through that we don't agree with if we have that power in the upper house. So though we may not be able to get rid of him, we can get rid of his a lot of his influence that's coming on Victorians. Gotcha. Now, there, there are a lot of, um, as I mentioned before, other uh, conservative so-called Freedom Parties who are running in the upper house alongside you. There is, as I mentioned before, the Freedom Party of Victoria. Uh, we have uh, One Nation who have decided to um, contest. Why should a voter who might be on the conservative side of things might be, you know, really unhappy with, with the coalition, definitely wouldn't vote Labor, vote for the UAP over someone like the Freedom Party or, or One Nation or Family First or anyone like that? Well, we're very happy for, for people to vote in the House of Representatives however they want, if they want to pick we Freedom don't have Party, a House One of Nation. in Victoria. Okay, a, a lower house. 
or a legislative assembly. Um, we, I'm very happy for them to, to vote those parties. In the upper house, we want them to vote United Australia Party. So vote whoever you want in the lower house, but in the upper house, we're asking for people to vote for the United Australia Party. There was a, uh, back in 1980, a gentleman who left the Liberal Party called Don Chip coined a phrase and he said, we're running in the Senate to keep the bastards honest. And that's what we're looking to do here in the upper house of Victoria. Yeah, yeah but why the UAP over the, of them? Because, I, again, you're not the same, but you do have, you know, similar parties to a party like um, Freedom or One Nation. One Nation's been a, around a bit longer than yours, not necessarily in Victoria, but still they've got that brand. They've got um, Pauline Hanson's name attached to it as well. Um, but but why? What's What makes you guys stand out? Well, I guess from our, well, I can't answer for the other parties. So I'm not doing a comparison of parties. What I can tell you about out of our 16 candidates, seven are from small business. Now that's quite substantial. None are from unions. None are from an education background. A couple of them are from medical background. Two of them are former uh, Australian Defence Force personnel. One's been, was in there for more than 35 years. So that's quite a mix of people. Then when you have a look at a Labor Party which is quite clearly trade unions throughout all of theirs, and a Liberal Party who now is more and more through local council that are coming up. I can't answer for the other parties where they're coming from, but for us, we've got people who have put money on the line, who have grown business, who have fought and defended for this country. And we're just ordinary, just none of them have, have had political background before except myself. Um, so we're just ordinary Australians who didn't really have much to do with politics before, didn't want anything to do with politics before, but politics came to them. Now, of course, you were a, a lower house MP. You're now running in the the upper house. Uh, as as we've um, talked about to our viewers here on Six News before, the upper house obviously has our group voting ticket system. Um, does the United Australia Party support keeping that system in place? We've got to do with what the system is at the moment. So our, our role is to get in, whether we support it or not, hasn't even come up as a discussion, but that's the game that, that's about. They're the rules that are about, and so that's the one that we're in. And what about whether you're going to be working with Preference Whisperer Glenn Drury? Is that a possibility? No, that's no possibility for us. All right. Uh, and just finally, I want to know, how do you think you'll actually go? It's it's definitely a hotly contested race in the upper house generally and, and right across the state. So what do you make of your own personal chances and the UAP's chances? Well, Northern Victoria region, which is the one I'm going to, is very open. Uh, they're more sensible up there, I believe, as well. The further north you go out of Melbourne, the more sensible they become, I believe. <clears throat> and we've got a very good chance in the northern region. But we've got, I, I believe we could pick up at least half of those seats. We could pick four at least out of the eight, out of the 40, sorry, that are available. We could, we could possibly, quite possibly pick up four. Freedoms parties could pick up a couple as well. All right, we'll leave it there. Jeff Shaw, thanks for your time and, of course, best of luck. Thank you very much for having me on.